Rabbi and just asked me this morning, uh, can we actually in ePlan Pro Panel start and create a panel layout directly in 3D based on an Excel sheet? Technically, what we want is we want to start with an Excel sheet like this. This Excel sheet has quantities, part numbers, and I want to jump in right away into my 3D of a project without going through schematics. Now, of course, one of the things that we often ask ourselves, how big do I need my panel to be? Well, typically what I do is very simple. I take the width, the height, I measure basically the area of each component. I take this by the quantities, of course, we have here in the front, and this is my quantity for each part. I summarize the whole thing, I make it times four, and then I go and get the square root of this value, which is 755. This basically gives me an idea of roughly how much space I will need to place these components. Now, I'm gonna go back to, of course, that ePlan, and the idea here is, of course, to go in the panel building industry here. This is a cool website, really, oh, I love it. I mean, this is really something you can go in here and, and discover all kinds of different things and how you, know, you can improve uh, everything that goes around your panel building. Uh, and in, in, particular case, in this particular case, what I'm interested in is jump right into the panel build. So of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump to my Rital website. I'm gonna look for a component that has somewhat the right size. So here I could use a 600 by 760 or I could use a 600 by 1000. So here I have the part number that I need, 109500. Means in ePlan, I can right away go into insert and closure, go for that part number. Now, if you can find it right away, here it is, and you have downloaded it, perfect. Otherwise, you just go down into your uh, data portal of ePlan and you go check for that part and everything comes with it. As you can see, the part comes right away with the different surfaces. Uh, it's actually organized by housing, door, mounting plate. And I'm gonna jump right away into the mounting plate. I haven't done anything else. And I'm gonna go and start with the obvious uh, docking cables and place those ones. So here I go, place it down here very quickly. There we go, it's a little bit too far. Let's call off the collision check. So I'm just gonna go here, boom, like this. Take this one from here, make it the same length, perfect. Move it over, have it started right from the beginning here, there. Whoops, I made a small mistake, no big deal. Just take it and stretch it a little bit longer like this and it's done. Now, of course, when we talk about panels, we often talk about panels and to get started, we always have the same type of components. We have a main disconnect, we have some, some uh, power distribution blocks, we have some uh, 120 volt, we have a 24 volt DC uh, power supply, all kinds of components here that are standard, that always come with every panel. So I start my panels already there, and then I just complete with a couple of more docks and a couple of more rails. Maybe I have some room here. Let's place it down there like this. Uh, let's place some uh, thin rails, of course, here, very easy to choose. Of course, if you do have different companies or different manufacturers, they all have their own uh, thin rail, uh, certain length, and this one here is the full length, two meter, yes, it, it is. And I can just continue and place it here, okay? Right there, perfect. Now this can be duplicated. So we have interesting features like the duplication. So the graphics, we are very, very fast in creating these. So let's say we want two of those. So I mean, it may be too much, but it's just to show you, even if it goes a little bit too far, take this one, just delete it, who cares? And there we go. You wanna move this one very quickly back into the space down at the bottom. You can just move it down. You can change its handle. So it's really quick. I don't know any other tools that are that quick to actually uh, make the placement. And of course comes now the clue, can I take this Excel sheet and import it into ePlan? Yes, I can. I can take this here, part slash device, device list. I have a list, interesting, this list, let's start from scratch. I just delete it, boom, gone, okay? I just import that list and the list will actually do two things. It will give me the quantities and it will also evaluate the components that are already positioned. You can see here the ones that are at zero are already positioned with that one block and macro that I did. So if you wanna take this one and just drag and drop it, perfect, just go ahead, place it here wherever you need. If you want some up there, you want them down there, you can see that they automatically snap. So it's really like 
a small child's play to come and position those. If you want to move it again, you just take it, drag it, and boom, place it there. It's, it's a child's play. It's really beautiful the way it actually works. Very, very quick, interesting. If I take something else, and, and this is the interesting part, like these kind of components, these are overloads that actually hook up into an existing component. So those ones, when I approach them here, there is an attaching point, a mounting point, and it attaches right away into the right uh, mounting point. This is quite interesting because um, if I would have done this, let's say in a 2D environment, I would have probably not even thought about the possibility of putting them there. Here in 3D, it's very obvious that they basically pin there and they don't go on a DIN rail, right? So um, let's try something else. Here we have a power flex. That's a fairly big component. It actually fits uh, fairly well. So in this case, we don't have it too much of an issue. And you can go on and on and on like this, and you will see all these components are to be placed. What's interesting is when you start placing things on the door, right? Of course, like push buttons, you could just go about uh, ignoring the collision check. I'm not gonna ignore it. And I'm gonna try to place these eight push buttons here, and I'm gonna try and place them somewhere here. And you can see that while I'm placing it, there are some areas where I can place them, some areas I can place them. So of course, I'm just gonna go about and place these push buttons there. Probably it would be better if I open this view entirely like this from the front view, and then start placing these push buttons. Then you would actually see that it might actually be better to go a little bit further down here, because if I go here, I can't even place it, right? Because it actually will hit uh, on the um, uh, power supply that is in the background. Now, as you place them here, sometimes you lose the count. So I had eight to place, and you can see I have already placed six of them. Uh, maybe I can place two more in this area here. That's nice, nice one below each other, and that's all cute. Perfect. And there's one push button left. I think it's this one here, and I can just go and place it. Now, if I try to place it, of course, here, it's going to tell me, no, it's not possible because you're hitting this component. You have to move it up a little bit. So this is interesting because this is the big advantage of 2D versus 3D. If you actually look at it from a, from the side here, you can see that these components have a certain width. And when you totally look at it from a side perspective here, you can see that we don't have too much space to actually look at it, right? So this is really the advantage of 2D versus 3D, and you can place all these components. Now, at the end of the day, interesting is that we can generate different views. I don't have any views at the moment. I don't have any schematics for the moment but I can already generate several different views. Now, these views are front view, side view, and actually also for the manufacturing, we actually focus on the different steps that's, that are uh, uh, actually um, needed and required to build this panel. One of the th step I can think of is actually cutting the, uh, the docks, the cable docks and the rails. I mean, at one point in time, of course, you have to cut them in the right length. So what these views actually allow me to do, and this is all automatic. So basically if you change something, you come back and they can be updated. It's basically like the bill of material. If you add a component, it's added in the bill of material. Here are the same thing. These model views automatically update, as you can see, and it's done. And they start basically with the first front top view, which is basically just a nice overview of what we expect the panel builder to build. That's nice, cool, we can see everything. But let's concentrate on the docks and the rails. Here we eliminate all the components and we can see the docks and the rails. We can see here on the top left-hand side, we have the different length of these docks and rails. We can prepare them and come and assign them in here. The other thing we have is we have now a detailed view that we can have for the placing of the components. So labeling of the components, we have it also in a detailed fashion here. And interesting about this view here is that on the right hand side, if we actually zoom in, we can see additional information that wasn't there before, information about the components themselves and how much heat dissipation they actually produce. In this case here, we have 180 watts, 0.18 kilowatts that are added up. So that's not too much. It's not gonna overheat in this particular panel, but it's good to know, right? And if, it's go, if, if we go to the push buttons here, we have a list of all the push buttons. But interesting is working with Rital together, we have a technology that is able of evaluating which surface will require some holes. And we can actually forward this project to Rital. And what it will do, it will simply generate, it was too quick to actually believe it. And uh, here it will generate these drill 
views. So every one of these uh, holes, uh, push buttons that we actually did place, we can see that we're not perfectly in line, generates a hole. And Rital is capable of performing uh, these holes directly on a machine, Perforex, and send you the exact um, holes uh, pre-drilled in the panels so uh, that you don't have to do it and spend any time there. And it's all very, very precise. Of course, anything that you change, anything that you move will update these views. So the question was, can I start with an Excel sheet and build a panel layout directly in 3D inside ePlan without having the schematics? Yes, you can. The answer is definitely yes, you can. And it's actually a very nice fashion, fairly quick. Here we spent about 10 to 11 minutes on how to do it with ePlan. Uh, so I really encourage you, it's it's a lot faster than doing it by hand. Stick to ePlan. ePlan is the plan.